flew over that way past the woods. Well, Mingle's in that basket. Really? Is the little fellow going for a toy ride? No, of course not. You told him he was a nuisance and that Weather didn't want to see him anymore. So he said he was going to go away and live alone. And he'd never bother Weather again. A nuisance, huh? It's your fault he's gone away forever. You're mean. But Mingle does depend on Weather. Yes, all the time. But I'd like to teach you to... No. All of you children have mothers and fathers you depend on, but Mingle's all alone, and so am I. So naturally, we depend on each other. You see, Mingle and I are friends, and friends are never a nuisance to each other. So please, be kind to him. Mm. We mustn't waste any more time. We've got to find him and bring him back. There goes Papa's helicopter. He's on his way home from work. Which way the balloons went? Did you see any balloons from the helicopter? No, but I heard you were sending up balloons with seeds in them. I saw them, but you shouldn't be sending them up in bunches like that. Each balloon should be going up separately, you know. It's that bunch we're looking for. They're carrying Mingle away in a basket. But why is he leaving? Well, when I saw that bunch, it was drifting over that way towards Mount Bread Knife. I sure hope Mingo is going to be all right. We've got to find him soon. I'm worried. I see balloons over there. They're caught in the tree. I think the helicopter has found the balloons. Let's go over that way. Miss Lewis, any sign of Mingo? I don't see him anywhere. Oh. Huh. <sighs> Wait! Mingo! Mingo? He's not in the basket. Gee, I wonder where he went. Mingo! Mingo could fly out of there easily. He must be right around here somewhere. Let's have a look. I wonder where he could have gone. Mingo! 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 Yes! I'm right here! That's funny. I could have sworn I heard Mingo answer us. Oh, yes, I'm sure I heard his voice. I did, too. Then I didn't just imagine it, but where is he? Mingo! Yes! His voice sounds as if he's right here with us. Where are you? Right beside you! Right beside us? I heard his voice just now. I can't hear anything but the helicopter noise. Oh, that's where he is. I'd be lost without you. I don't know what the problem was, but I'm glad it's over. Well, Mingle's safe anyway. Yes, yeah, he's with weather again. We can go home now. We're off to rescue Mingle, of course. Just leave it to us. We'll find the little fellow and bring him back to safety. We're off. Too late, Walter. Mingle's here with me. Hi, guys. Oh, oh. Mingle. How did you get back here so fast? Oh. Now we haven't got anyone to look for. I was really surprised when I saw Mingle leaving on the helicopter. How'd you get there? The balloons got caught in the tall tree. First, I climbed out of the basket onto a branch. And then, when I saw the helicopter coming down, I decided to try for a jump. That whirling blade was scary, but I took a chance. Nobody but Mingle could have done a stunt like that. When Weather went away and left me alone, Of course.
course not. I went to the city to look for the parts I need to build a second telescope. I thought Mingo should have one of his own so we could look at the stars together. I think looking at the stars will be a lot more fun if we both have telescopes. You mean we'll be back together the way we were before? For always. <laughs> hey, look at all those caterpillars! Walter, those caterpillars are clinging to you. Thank you. 
store, nobody will want to buy these oranges for. Well, there. Well, you did this? Yes. You've put me in a terrible spot. What can I do? Uh, I'll buy all the bruised oranges. Oh, you will? That makes everything all right. Oh, you're saving? It's the only thing to do, Laura. It was all my fault. These are heavy. What are you going to do with all these bruised oranges you bought, Rue Bear? Well, there's no point in taking them home. Mommy couldn't use this many. If only you hadn't been so silly, you shouldn't have gone into a supermarket on roller skates. I just wasn't thinking. I'm tired of carrying them. What are you going to do? I don't know. Hi, Rue Bear. What you got in the boxes? Hello, Laura. Hello, Floppy. Mimi, you'll never guess what Rue Bear did. Laura. Oh, my. Look at all those oranges. What are you going to do with all those oranges, Rue Bear? Well, let me see. I can let you have all you want at a bargain price. Huh? A bargain? Even three or four would be a help. Look, these oranges all look as if they've been badly bashed and bruised. Oh, a little bruise here and there, but they're fresh. Wow. They're all smashed. Buy some, please. Don't be pushy, Rue Bear. Sorry, Rue Bear. I don't need any oranges right now. And anyway, I haven't got any money on me. I'm sorry, Rue Bear. See you later. We almost sold some. Oh, Rue Bear, you can't expect people to buy oranges that are bruised. Sorry, Laura. Oh, my bad! I lost my dog! 
<laughs> well, that's quite a story. You were lucky you were able to sell all those squashed oranges finally. Here's your allowance, money. Thank you, Papa. You'll have to buy a new baseball bat, son. And you'll have to buy a new doll, Laura. Yes, I'm going to have the best bat in town. And I'll love my new doll. A word of advice, Ruth Bear. Don't ever again go into a supermarket wearing roller skates. It's a very expensive thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do. Yeah, there aren't any crooks in this town. Nobody ever steals anything here. It's a shame. Do you think if some crooks did come to town, the people would help us catch them? I wish I knew. Calling Floppy. Have you got any money on you? Over. Floppy here. Sorry, no money. What do you need it for? Well, I'm standing in front of an ice cream store and I wish I had some money. Over to you, Floppy. Same here. I'm looking at a fruit stand and the fruit looks delicious, but there's nothing we can do about it. Stop! stop thief! Stop. Somebody stop those thieves! Help, everybody! Count oh. them! Oh! Emergency! Emergency! Chasing the thief! 
thief with the red mask. Roger, good work, Floppy. I'll chase the one with the blue mask. <laughs> Which way he went? This is Rubear. I can't find my thief, Floppy. Over. This is Floppy. I'm still chasing mine. Ah, no, no. Help! Hey, stop, please! A thief! A thief! This is big news! A thief! Gee, I wonder where that thief has gone. He may be hiding right around here somewhere. Huh? Uh, excuse me. Stop, thief! What? This is Rubear calling Floppy. Over to you. This is Floppy. I'm still on the run. Huh? Oh. Floppy calling Rubear. Now I've lost my thief. How are you doing with yours? Over. Well, I'm chasing my thief again, Floppy, but I seem to be in a barrel. Well, that must make it hard to see where you're going. <laughs> so you were hiding in this truck, huh? Halt! News! Really sensational news! No fooling sensational news thieves in town are making their getaway! Mr. Mayor, I understand that our peaceful town has never had a case of theft. Now, why is that? <clears throat> well, it's obviously because all the people here are totally honest. And I think as mayor, I could take some... It's running loose in town! <laughs> Two bold thieves, they're escaping! Thieves in our town? That's preposterous! Now, tell me, Mackie Mackie, what was it these thieves stole? Ah, uh, I don't know. I was so excited, I never thought to ask. I'll find out! Uh, there must be some mistake. There certainly aren't any thieves in our town. Still, let's check. I'll just call the police station. There's no answer at the police station. Well, of course not. Our boys are on the job. Our two policemen are out chasing those dastardly thieves, as they should be, noble lads. used to all that running. This is Rubear calling Floppy. Come in, Floppy. Can you read me? Yes, Floppy here. What's happening? I've got my thief cornered. He's taking a rest, but what do you think I should do now? I can't arrest him. Over to Floppy. I've got a problem, too. My thief has gone into the public washroom, and I'm just waiting for him out here. I don't know what to do. Over. These thieves are kind of scary. I wish you were here. Oh, I don't want to be a litter bug. Will you throw that in the trash for me? Hmm. He's got a nerve. Oh, Blue Bear, I hear you were chasing a thief. What did he look like? Well, I don't really know what he looks like because he had a mask on. I don't understand at all. They don't seem to have stolen anything. You'd think if they had, it would have been reported. Mm. What do you think, Blue Bear? Blue Bear? Hey. Huh? Oh. Are you down there, Blue Bear? Oh, I wonder where he's got to. It's spooky down here. I hear footsteps. I can't tell which way they're going, though. I need help. Hello, this is Rubear calling Floppy. I guess our walkie-talkies don't work underground. I've really got him cornered this time, Rubear. This is Floppy. Come in, Rubear. Rubear. Go back down, young fella. It isn't safe here. You thief, you can't get rid of me that way. I've got you trapped now. Be careful, son. Stay there. Hang on. Oh. 
find out if we'd get any help from the people of this town if some real thieves came. Oh, what a pair of bumbling screwballs. Oh, I see. That's why they were so nice to us. Mr. Mayor, these two boys were wonderful. They'd be a big help with our work. Yes. You acted like real heroes today, young men. <laughs> Where's that Ruben? Huh? Oh. I'll get you in. Whoa. Run for it. Oh, no. Tennis, Pammy. I'm just not built right for that game. Tennis certainly isn't a game for a girl with short legs like yours. What an insulting thing to say. Uh, I'm sorry if the truth hurts, Pammy. Well, you don't have to say it. Oh, oh boy, it's going way off into the woods. Oh, never mind. I'll get it. Uh. No. Not here. are doing it using natural things. We don't need modern luxuries. We make things with our hands. Mm. I don't know what you're talking about, but you look awful. Betty and Pammy, why don't you give up tennis and all that modern stuff and come back to nature with us? You'll feel free when you give up all modern comfort. Let's try it, Betty. I think the back to nature life would suit me better than tennis healthy. <laughs> 
But I sure wouldn't want to have to dress like that. Let's ask Laura what she thinks. <laughs> oh, wait! Penny! Understand? We wear clothes to keep warm, but also to make us look nice. My grip does both those things. And for shelter, we'll build a house for ourselves. We'll have to have tools to do that. I'll go and borrow them from Papa. A saw, a hammer, and lots of others. Oh no, we have to make those things for ourselves. It wouldn't be fair to use modern tools. Can we make tools like that? Just leave it to me. How about you girls making some dishes for us? Sure! <laughs> There, our hammer's all finished. What's that, Floppy? I made us an axe. Do you think your axe will really chop wood? It'll cut this big stick like butter. Gee, Floppy, maybe you should have used that big stick for the axe. <laughs> How's that for using my head? Isn't making dishes easy? There now. But what is it? It's a bowl. Look at the nice teapot I made. Beautiful dishes. Oh, dear. Ah. Oh. Don't forget to follow the plan I made. Getting these sticks tied together is the really tricky part of the work. Can you do it, Robert? Just leave it all to me. Ah. Ooh. Ah. Ah. You're supposed to tie up the sticks, not yourself. I'll remember that next time, Floppy. I brought you some more leaves, Nick. Yeah, thanks. Ouch! Hey, watch what you're doing, Nick. That's my ear. Ow! No! It was Nick's fault. He tied my ear to the side of the house. It's Floppy's plan. It just won't work. Yeah, well, if you Nick owns this house, house, he's it's just doing a pile I'm of old branches. You expect us to live in that dark hole? What we care in your leafy house? I don't like it. It's just an old cave you found. It's exactly the kind of home our ancestors used to live in before there were modern houses. If it's really a shelter, will it protect us from the rain? Sure it will. It may be dark and dreary, but it'll keep out the rain. Oh, oh, oh nice. nice! By the way, did you finish making all the dishes that we'll need? You call those things dishes? They look awful! I wouldn't want to eat anything out of those. They're nothing but ugly lumps of clay. We work very hard to make those. And if you don't believe us, just try making some yourself. When are you going to start cooking? Before we can do any cooking, we'll have to have water and fire, and so far we haven't got either one. Hey, Floppy, weren't we supposed to dig a well? Um, we haven't got the tools. Even if we dig a well, there might not be water in it. What did our ancestors do to get water? Hey! Good question, Tammy. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, ah. I should have known the answer. Our ancestors got water from a river. place will make a fire in it. Our fireplace will be finished in a minute. Gee, Rubert, do you really know how to make a fire? Sure, wait and see. that nature means doing a lot of hard work. Floppy? 
No, our ancestors didn't have matches and they got fired this way. I'll keep going. I'll get some dry grass. Hey, look at that! You're almost there! Keep going, Floppy!
Christine will like his wreath of flowers. I suppose he's feeling kind of sad because this will be the last time he runs his steam train. Yes, but it sure is nice that his last run is such an important one, huh, Blue Bear? Yeah, it's important to get all that water to Green City right away. They haven't had rain for weeks now and they need drinking water very badly. children. Look, we brought you a wreath of flowers for your train. Really? Is it all right there, Mr. Steam? It's beautiful, and thank you. I really didn't know you children cared so much about me. You made this last one of mine a kind of happy celebration. Say, I've got an idea. Why don't you children ride with me to Green City? It's an historic occasion. Oh, could we really, Mr. Steam? I'd be delighted to have you. Oh, yeah. It should sparkle for his last run. Shine it up, Pammy. <laughs> Good work, Laura. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Mayor. Nice of you to see me off on the last one of my train. Good luck. You've got to get that water through to Green City. They need it very badly, and they're depending on you, Mr. Steam. Don't worry. Get that water to them. Now I wonder where the children are. They wanted to come with me. after we finished polishing the locomotive. Well, I thought we were only going to have a little nap. It's late. What now? Look, we're out in the country, but the train isn't moving. Maybe that big bump we had was an accident or something. Let's find out. <clears throat> What's become of Mr. Steam? Oh, Mr. Steam! Oh, you children were on the train all along. Oh, must have hurt yourself. Ran into a tree across the track and I guess I've got a bad bump. He's hurt his arm. We'd better get a doctor right away. Well, I don't think there's any doctors around here. We won't find one out here in the country. We've got to get going. We're ten minutes late already. Uh, uh, oh, uh. You just can't do it, Mr. Steam. I've been running this train for 40 years now and never failed once. Especially on my last run like this, I want to get to Green City on time. I've got to deliver this water to them no matter what. Uh, oh, Mr. Steam. Steam! Is that any better, Mr. Steam? That sling helps a lot. Good, but you still can't use your arm. Can we do something to help you? Hmm. I know, we'll run the locomotive for him. Sure, we can do it, I bet. That's ridiculous. You children don't know anything about running a locomotive. No, but just pretend we're your arms and legs. Tell us each thing to be done and we'll do it. It's a nice thought, but it just wouldn't work. Oh, please, Mr. Steam. Hmm. Oh, well, I suppose we could try it. I can't think of any other way. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm sure to get everything right. All right. The first thing to do is pull that handle back to take the brakes off. This one here? Next, pull that one down for the whistle. 
All right, now, you pull that big lever down as hard as you can, Rue Bear. Hey, we're on our way. We're going on the way again. No, all you have to do is keep shoveling coal in the fire. Oh, what fun. That'll be our job. Spilling that coal, we won't have enough to get there that way. There isn't much coal left in there. The bin is almost empty now. Hey, that's funny. When we started, there was lots of coal in there. Oh, Mr. Steen, there's a big hole in the floor. I see. That explains it. It must have happened when we ran into that tree. Rue Bear, we'll have to stop the train and go chop down some trees for firewood. Yeah. trees around here. Well, I guess the time has come to give up the plans we had before. Yes, I'll have to give up my hope of getting my train through on time, but I still worry about the people of Green City. Oh, I didn't mean to give up that plan. I meant we'd give up our plan for lunch. There. Blue Bear, you're burning your lunch in your knapsack. It's for Mr. Steam and the thirsty people of Green City. Here goes my lunch, too. The fire can have my lunch, too. Here goes my scarf, my hat, and my knapsack. Me too. I really love that scarf. I don't know what to say. You're wonderful. It's an awful place for the train to stop. I guess we're really stuck here. We haven't got anything left to burn. Well, you certainly did your best to keep the train running. We have to give up. Oh, come on, everybody. We're not giving up yet. What do you mean? I know one thing. I just did a long time ago. It's very strange that the train hasn't shown up yet. This isn't like Mr. Steen. He's never late. I hope they'll be here soon. Great job you're doing, Rube. I don't care if you burn up the whole train for firewood. Just get us to Green City with this precious water. We'll make it all right. Attention, the train with water is arriving. Well, Mr. Steam may be late, but he got here. I'm sure this will make a good story for my magazine. Quick, somebody give me a hand here. I want an ambulance here right away. Yes, sir. Oh, there's Ruth there. Ah, uh, Station Master! I want to hear the whole story, but first let me thank these children. All the people of Green City want to thank you for bringing this water to them. That's <laughs> nice! So it was a tree across the track. Yes, and the train would still be back there if it weren't for these children. You'd better get Mr. Steam to the hospital. Yes, sir! Now, we owe you children an awful lot. And if there's anything I can do for you, just ask me. Yes, sir. Yes, we're, we're thirsty. We want water. Oh? <laughs> 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 
个。Thirsty. I hope you're not going to drink up all the water you brought for Green City. Is to always report the truth. Don't write about something that isn't true. And of course, you should write about what your readers want to know. And lastly, report anything you find that's wrong. Fight for justice for all. But we have to write the truth. I can do that. Look for something that's wrong and stop it. I'll fight for justice for all. But Ruber, it takes a lot of money to publish a newspaper. We haven't even got a printing press. Yep, I thought about that, Floppy. To start with, we can just stick our stories up on this board so people can read them. Do you think people will read them just on a board like that? Of course. And once we got people interested in our stories, we'll start printing a real newspaper. I'm not sure I can write a story. Don't worry, Mimi. I'll put your story up on our bulletin board, even if it isn't any good. How dare you say my story isn't any good? Sorry, Mimi. Now we have to make our promise. Yes. yes. We, we all promise our stories will be nothing but the truth. truth. We'll, we'll tell, tell our readers what they want, want to know and fight for justice, justice for all. What are you gonna write about, Nick? I don't know. I've never done anything like this before. Let's stop at the ice cream shop and see if there's anything to write about there. You never know. Hello, children. Hello. We're from the new children's newspaper. Is there anything to write about here? Huh? This is an ice cream shop. I know that, but a good newspaper prints what its readers want to know. There must be something interesting you want to know. Hmm. Yes, there is. Oh, oh goody, goody! Tell us what it is, and we'll write all about it. A story. I want to know how many ice cream cones I'm gonna sell today. Oh. Hi there. Where can we find some excitement? Oh boy, am I glad to see you. How would you three like to be reporters for our children's newspaper? What are you talking about? We're starting a new newspaper written entirely by children. Hey, will you please write a story for our newspaper? That sounds like a lot of fun. Would it be all right if it was a story about me? Why, sure, but it has to be a true story. That's great. I know a true story. I know one too. <laughs> it better be a story about me. Hey, what are you two writing over there? Don't disturb the artist at work. Well, hurry up and finish it and read it to me. It's all finished, Walter. <laughs> Thank you. What does she snatch it away for? The newspaper always gets to read it first. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> What's this? This is a great story, Walter. Thanks for the story, horsey. See ya. <laughs> What did you guys write about anyway? Uh, the story we wrote is perfectly true. And we wrote the story about you because you asked us to. What did you write? We just wrote the story of how you keep writing love letters to Betty, but then you're too scared to mail them, so now you have 70 of them at home. You numbskulls! Now Betty won't read that and I'll be so embarrassed! But when it gets to be printed in the newspaper, Betty will read it and then she'll know how you feel and that'll be good! We did it all for you, Walter! Stop the planter! <laughs> Writing the truth can get you into a lot of trouble. Maybe we should write fiction, huh? reporter for our children's newspaper and I don't know what to write about. You'll have to work that out for yourself, Laura. If I just had an idea for a story, I sure could write it. Why don't you ask Miss Lewis for an idea? Hmm. Report anything you find that's wrong. You must fight for justice for all. 
I'm all set, Mommy. Two months ago, my brother Rubear borrowed my allowance money and he still hasn't paid me back. This is very wrong. I'll fight for justice for all. I want my money back. That sounds fine. Stop right there. Come back here, Nick and Tammy. Give me that paper back. I want it. Do all reporters have to keep running like this? Why is that? Because they have to escape from the enemies of truth. I'll get you now. say a good reporter will walk miles to find a story for his newspaper. Well, he sure walked miles today and still no story. Hey, Mimi, why not do a kind of book of records about people in our town? Yeah, the best and the worst. Whoever is really the most. I'm Floppy, the best inventor in town. Oh, stop that boast. I'm not boasting. It's just reporters always tell the truth. All right, then. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Read that. Yeah, in baseball, Floppy holds the record for the number of times he's been struck out. Hey! <laughs> I'm not lying, and Miss Lewis said reporters should always tell the truth. Wait! Stop! Hold it right there! Stop! I can't run anymore. I'm not the runner type. I'll catch you this time! Come on, Nick. You can make it. Oh. Whee! Whee! <laughs> <Ouch>. <laughs> Mimi, you come back here with that piece of paper! No! This will be my scoop for the newspaper! <laughs> Look out! <laughs> Walter has written 70 love letters to Betty and never mailed them! Give me back that paper! What a great scoop this is! I hope my reporters bring back good stories. We'll fight for justice and truth will win. I bet they'll be good. over my shoulder. Go away. Don't be so mean, Nick. Pammy, if you don't write something soon, you won't have a story to take back to the editor-in-chief. Oh. Hmm. Let me see. The other day, I had a fight with Pammy, and she threw a pillow at me. Mommy scolded Pammy and told her not to be so childish, to act more like a grown-up. Pammy got into Mommy's makeup because she wanted to be like a grown-up. But Mommy scolded her again. Even with the makeup, Pammy wasn't very much like a grown-up. It's done. Let me have it. No, give it back, Mimi. <laughs> this really is a scoop. I want to read it, too. All he says is how girlish you are. I'll take it to the editor-in-chief. Oh, Nick, did you really say I was girlish? It can't be that. What did you say about me, Nick? I wrote nothing but the truth. Yeah, but what truth did you write? Now, please calm down, Pammy. What are you doing here, Walter? Oh, oh I was nothing special. Bye. Big news today. There's going to be a children's newspaper. A children's newspaper? Mine's finished, Rubear. You mustn't call me Rubear. I'm editor-in-chief. All right, editor-in-chief. What? Rubear still hasn't given back the allowance money he borrowed. This just won't do. But Rubear, I mean editor-in-chief, that's a true story and I'm fighting for justice, so you've got to put it on the board. All right, all right. Rubear, I've got a real scoop for you here. Oh, let me have it. <laughs> it says that Walter is afraid to send his love letters to Betty. <laughs> I thought Walter was the kind of guy that would just walk up to Betty and hand her a letter. Rubear, Rubear, here's my scoop. Hey, you've got two of them. What do they say, Rubear? <laughs> Can 
Mary wanted to be more grown up, so she got into her mother's makeup and she got scolded. Isn't that just like Pammy? What's in the other scoop you've got? Uh, it says Floppy holds the record. He's been struck out more than anybody. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, Mimi. Isn't that great? Our newspaper has lots of scoops. Well, uh, they're both after me. Help. <laughs> hey, what's the matter, Nick? Over there. Walter and Pammy? I want that paper back. Mine too. <laughs> Children's newspaper. Can I see it? Uh, Betty! Uh, I'm afraid you're a little late. The children's newspaper has come and gone. And now we have another report about the ghost ship. This makes five people who have reported seeing a mysterious ship passing in the night. No wonder the local folks call it a ghost ship. No one has been seen on the ship. It just glides by and then it's gone. Think of that, we've got a ghost ship. I'm sorry, but I don't believe a word of it. Still, it makes an exciting story for my readers. <laughs> oh, Miss Lewis, always after a story. Come now, let's all have tea. Have a bun, Miss Lewis. Oh, what nice-looking bun. Rubert and Laura, your tea's getting cold. What are those children doing? Come and have your tea with us, children. Anyway, the TV is off. Why are you still looking at it? Oh, it's just that I'm so worried about Dr. Flight. Me too. Why? Has something happened to Dr. Flight? Oh. It was three days ago that he told us. Yes, that's when he said... I'm going to meet the ghost of the ghost ship. We have a rendezvous. <laughs> the, the ghost, ghost of the, the ghost, ghost ship. ship. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> oh, I'm sure Dr. Flight can look after himself. But he didn't come back. Oh, Dr. Flight was just pulling your leg. Do you mean he was just kidding? Well, our Dr. Flight has always been a kidder. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we organize a search party and go looking for Dr. 
after a flight, just to find out why he didn't come back. Yeah, I don't believe in ghosts, but we should find out what's going on. I don't care what you say, I'm scared of ghosts. Me too. I'm not scared of anything. That's good. You should come with Rubear and me then, Pammy. The three of us will rescue Dr. Flight. This is the island where those people saw the ghost ship. Well, that should be easy to find. Rubear, do you think there's a ghost on the ghost ship? Yes, I do. And I think that ghost has captured Dr. Flight somehow and he can't get away from it. I'm going to give that ghost a piece of my mind. Look at that. That's got to be where we're going. Wow. What a weird place. What do you say we check inside this cave first? Maybe it'll lead to the other side of the island. All right, let's go. Hmm. the doctor. Yes, and I will. There's Dr. Flight's plane. Oh, is the doctor inside? No, I think the ghost ship's got him under its spell. Look that roof here. and rescue the doctor. Come on, Floppy. Hey, wait. Take me, too. I don't want to stay here alone in this creepy place. I'm going with you. <laughs> the boat's falling apart. Years ago, it might have been a beautiful ship. Now it just looks like a home for ghosts. There's a rope ladder up the side. first. I wonder what 
what's in there. I'm scared. I don't want to see what's in there. You know, oh, crying isn't going to help, oh, oh, oh. Let's go in. Here, let me try, Rubear. Oh, a cage! So, you were the ones making all that racket out here. What have you children been up to? There's nothing to be afraid of. My name is Briny. I'm the captain of this ship. Welcome aboard. And come out of that cage. My grandfather built that to trap unwelcome visitors, but it's ready to fall apart now. Just push your way out of it and come and join us for some refreshments. Hello there, children. Dr. Dr. Flight! Flight! Doctor. It was very good of you to try to rescue me, but actually Captain Briney had asked me to come out here and give him some help. Then you and Captain Briney have been friends for a long time, huh? I'm afraid this will have to be my last voyage on this ship. But why, Captain? My proud ship is falling apart, but you should have seen her when she was young. As beautiful a ship as ever sailed the seven seas. My grandfather built her, and she was his pride and joy. At every port of call, the people came to see his ship, especially the children. He always welcomed them aboard. But this ship has seen a lot of bad weather. Wind and waves have battered her and torn her sails. By now, she's so in need of repairs that people are starting to call her a ghost ship. Very sad to see her like this. Well, I was heading for your village to get a few repairs done when suddenly a strong easterly wind came up and some treacherous water currents caught us. We ran aground on this island, and that's when I asked for help from Dr. Flight. I tried to tow Captain Briney's ship with my plane, but it just wouldn't work. Oh, that's too bad. Captain? Maybe the plane and our boat working together could do it. Well, we'll give it a try. It's late. I'd better get home soon. Me too. I guess my parents may be getting worried about me. Oh, that's all right. I've already notified your parents by ship's radio that you're safe here with me. Hey, hey thanks, thanks, Dr. Dr. Flight. Flight! And so the mystery of the ghost ship has been cleared up. The splendid old sailing ship was towed into port by the combined efforts of the children's motorboat and Dr. Flight's airplane. With some extensive repairs and a new set of sails, this fine ship will be ready to sail again. Thanks for your help, children, and see you soon. Goodbye! Goodbye! Goodbye. Oh, Captain Briney, I forgot to give you your hat. Oh, that's all right. You can keep it. Little gift for all of your help, Rubear. when there's nobody to poke fun at. Hey, Pammy's always good for a laugh. Yeah, let's tease her. <laughs> Hi there, Pammy. What are you doing? Leave me alone. Can I bore your balloon for a minute, Pammy? You can't have it, Walter. I'll give it back, I promise. Oh, that's no fair. Give me my balloon. You just wait. I'm going to make it look even better. Stop fooling around, Walter. I want it. What are you doing? Give it back to me. Does it look like Pammy? Hey! Yeah, Walter, it looks that's just like it because it's so round. You're so oh, clever, Walter. Hey! It's the same shape as Pammy. All right, that's enough, Walter. Give me that balloon. Certainly, Pammy. Here. Oh! <laughs> You're funny, don't you? You betcha. Ready? Now. Pammy, Pammy's a balloon. Pammy's a balloon. 
She said she'd come straight over here after she bought the balloon. Here she is now. Yes, that must be Pammy. <gasps> How come you're so late, Pammy? We were all getting worried about you. I thought you were going to get a balloon. I don't want to hear about that balloon. <laughs> oh, boys. I've never been so insulted in my life. Balloon, Pammy, indeed. I'll kill them. Oh, Pammy, are you... I've made up my mind, yes, sir. I'll get thin, very thin, so thin that nobody will ever again call me a balloon. Now, will you all help me get thin? Oh, oh sure. sure, Pammy. What's Pammy so worried about? Well, somebody must have told you she looked like a balloon, I guess. Sounds like Walter and his brothers. So you've decided to get thin, huh, Pammy? Any objections? No objections. I just thought that eating so much was maybe not the right way to take off weight, Pammy. Don't you worry. I'll go on a strict diet tomorrow. I always get hungry when I'm mad. Mm, 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 mm. Pammy! Nick, breakfast is ready. Oh, I'll pretend I didn't hear her. I can't have any breakfast. That wasn't me. My stomach didn't growl. What? Pammy isn't coming down for breakfast. That isn't like her. She must be sick. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Over here. I'm going to catch you. <laughs> oh, you're <laughs> There. You shouldn't have pushed her so hard. You knocked her down. You Laura. I only touched her. That's all right, Rupert. I'm kind of weak. And dizzy. That's because you didn't have any breakfast and only a glass of milk for lunch. You be careful, Pammy. That isn't healthy. Why don't you come over to my house? Mommy's making a eucalyptus cake and it should be ready by now. That's wonderful. Let's go, Pammy. No, I'm not going. You go along without me. Huh? I can stand it. I can stand anything to get rid of Balloon Pammy. I'm glad all of you came. The eucalyptus cake is ready. Hello, Hello Mrs. Mrs. Koala. Oh, but where's Pammy? Uh, she doesn't want any today. What a shame. I know Pammy loves my cake, so I made an extra large one today. Uh, 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 I'll be fine as long as I don't think about my cake. Oh, I'll bet that cake was delicious. Oh, it's so good. Rue Bear's mummy's cake is always the very best. I didn't think Pammy would be able to stick to her diet so well. Her feelings must have been very hurt. She'll make herself sick if she doesn't eat. It's not healthy to go without... Mommy's very worried about her, too. You know, it's Walter and his brothers that are to blame for all this. I think Walter should tell Pammy he's sorry. We can ask him to say he's sorry, but you know what Walter's like. Say I'm sorry. I was only telling her the truth. That's right. And we're busy making our raft right now, so don't bother us. Get water! <laughs> Pammy, please eat, Pammy. You've got to eat something. I told you I won't. Please, just a little bit, Pammy. Won't you do it for my sake? No, I won't eat. And Walter and his brothers will never say I look like a balloon again. <gasps> oh, but I'm so hungry. Hello, Nick. Has Pammy started eating yet? Only a little milk, and now she's gone out jogging. <laughs> How do I look? Don't you think I look a lot thinner already? Hmm? Hmm. Pammy! What happened? Speak to me! Pammy? Oh, do you Say think something? Do you oh, think maybe you should call a doctor? Anything the matter? Weather! Pammy's fainted! Pammy? No wonder she fainted if she hasn't eaten anything for three days since she was out jogging. Of course she will, if she eats something. She can't go on day after day doing exercises and not taking nourishment. But she refuses to eat anything. Why? It's all because of Walter and his brothers. They were the ones that told her she looked like a balloon. Mm. Where am I? You fainted, Pammy, because you haven't eaten anything. Come to our place for eucalyptus cake. You've got to eat, Pammy. No, I'll be a balloon again if I eat now. Don't be so stubborn, Pammy. 
Rubert, will you blow up these balloons for me? Blow them up? But make one of them only half blown up. Only half, huh? <laughs> like that? Perfect. Now, Pani, tell me which one of these balloons looks better. Which one? That's easy. The one completely blown up. That's right. Nobody likes a balloon that's all saggy and wrinkled. It looks sick. And it's the same thing with us. You don't want to look sick like that balloon, do you? You're right, Weather. I'm going to start eating. Well, yay! Yay, 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 yay! Now just help yourself, Pammy. Dig right in. There's lots more coming. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Koala. I'm glad you managed to eat everything, Pammy. And everything was delicious. I feel so good now. I think I'll take a walk. Goodbye. <laughs> I'll take a look. Well, I feel better, but I look like a balloon again. Help! Help! We're pulling! Well, pull harder! Walter. I'm slipping! I'm coming, Walter! Come on, guys! Pull that rope! <laughs> It's a good thing you had some food, Pammy. You couldn't have done it if you hadn't eaten. Pammy, you were wonderful. Thank you for saving my life. I shouldn't have called you a balloon. I'm sorry. We're sorry. I hope you'll never, ever again call Pammy a balloon. Never again. I promise. I don't mind being like a balloon. Hey, Weather, a nice round balloon is very attractive. It looks like you. What did you say? Oh, oh but Pammy. Pammy. You, you painted the balloon. Yeah, yeah well, we're, we're sorry, sorry, Pammy. Yeah! I don't oh, look like a balloon. Because you started all this trouble. Painting a balloon to look like me. Take that. And that. I'm not like a balloon at all. I got a good balloon. I'm exactly like a penguin. Take that.
you two. Run for home as fast as you can. It's weather. Very soon the wind will get even stronger. Look! Mr. Thomas's clock tower! Oh. I'm afraid this wind is going to blow it down. with the tower. It's a really bad storm. I hope it won't last much longer. There were so many years. What a shame. We love that clock tower. Yes, the townspeople were very proud of it. Has it been here for a long time? My grandfather built that tower. Today was its birthday. It would have been 99 years old. He fell down on his birthday? The poor thing. The town was planning to have a big festival next year for its centennial. Just think, a hundred years old. I know I'm going to miss hearing its lovely chimes every day. But why can't it be put back up again? Wouldn't it work? I think the clock itself is not too damaged. It could be fixed. It would cost too much. We haven't got the money. There must be a way to raise the money if everybody in town would cooperate. Yeah! Everybody in town could contribute something nice and we'll have a great big sale. Good plan. That's what you call a bazaar! <laughs> Thanks very much, one and all. Big Bazaar this afternoon for Mr. Thomas's clock tower. Everybody bring something to sell. Big Bazaar, Big Bazaar, save our beautiful clock tower. Don't miss the Big Bazaar this afternoon. Oh, it's a Big Bazaar, is it? I'll contribute to that. What fun. A Bazaar. You know, we can fix up that old clock tower ourselves. Hey, you know, Walter, you and the clock tower have your birthdays on the very same day. Oh, gee, Walter, I forgot today was your birthday. Congratulations, Walter. Let's have a party. A birthday party? Let's celebrate these two birthdays by doing something everybody will really like. Huh? Oh. oh. Beautiful. You bears love these eucalyptus cakes are the best in town. Don't take them away. I want some. No, Papa. If you want them, you'll have to buy them at the bazaar. Let's go, Floppy. Okay. What's all that stuff, Mr. Duck? Things are for the bazaar. There's some old toys I fixed up myself. They look just swell. Bye, Miss Bubbles, and spin, everybody. Beautiful fresh flowers here. Right here, the best eucalyptus cake in town. It's true. Just taste some, and you'll agree. I'll try one. Delicious with lots of eucalyptus flavor. I'll take five right away. I'd like five of them too, please. I'll take seven. Thank you. Come again. I want that one. Thank you. Pay the cash here. They're having a real good time. And all this is so we'll be able to fix up my clock tower again. Wow, what's that big cake for? This is a birthday cake to celebrate the 99th birthday of the clock tower. And when the bazaar is over, everybody that helps will have a piece of it. What a beautiful cake and a lovely thought behind it, too. Out of the way, everybody. We're coming through. Ho, ho, ho. important bazaar going on here. So we're not important? You're just fooling around with that blog. Yeah, Walter, find somewhere else to play. We came here to help.
help save the clock tower. That's nice, Walter, but that work is in progress. Thanks very much. All right, then. They don't want our help. Let's go home, Walter. They don't appreciate us. Oh, now, you can stay if you promise to behave yourselves. Why should we? There's lots of places I'd rather be. Then what are you hanging around here for? <laughs> All right, let's go. Oh. Who's that cake for? It's a birthday cake Mummy made. Wonderful. I'll take it. It's not for sale. Because it's me who wants to buy it, I suppose. No, it's a special cake for a birthday. We really want it. We could pay you for it later. You see, it's spoken for. Walter, stop behaving like a spoiled child. <laughs> Out of my way! <laughs> it's not yours! Why? Oh, no! Oh, Mummy's birthday cake! <laughs> I'll show you whose cake it is! No! <laughs> 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 Stop the fight! I didn't make that cake for you to throw it! Wipe the cake off your faces! You look ridiculous! Look at the mess you've made of our nice bazaar! I'll make another birthday cake! Bluebear, you go and find some more eucalyptus leaves! Why did Walter and his brothers have to come to the bazaar? The only thing they did was cause trouble. And why did they insist on having the birthday cake that Mommy made? Yes, they seem to think they had some right to be there. And what was that big log for? Oh. Oh. Shh. All I wanted to do was fix the clock tower. That's why we brought that log to make it good and solid. And they wouldn't even give us a chance to tell them about it. I guess we shouldn't have bothered trying to fix it. I had to do something. The tower's birthday is the same as mine. I couldn't just let it stay broken. Oh. Oh. Too bad about that cake. The minute I saw it, I really wanted to have it. I didn't know it was for the clock tower. I thought it was for my birthday. Walter, you know nobody's going to make a birthday cake for you. That's right. We don't go for birthday celebrations much in our family. Well, I don't care. I'm used to nobody paying any attention to my birthday. Here's what makes me happy. <laughs> Let's go. When I try to do something helpful, it never turns out right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now I understand. Oh, Walter. The lock was for the clock tower. And he thought the birthday cake was for him. I've got an idea. Let's see if we can get Mummy to help us. What's this? A parcel for me? Who's it from? Never mind. Just take it. It's heavy. Gee, I hope it isn't a jack-in-the-box, Mingo. No, but it may surprise you just to think. I bet it's some kind of joke. Well, you open it, Walter, not me. Hmm. A birthday cake. Hey, it's beautiful. Oh, it's got a boomerang decoration just for you. How come you didn't tell us today was your birthday? And about the log? <laughs> I've always been a shy type, you know. I've never thought of you as being shy, Walter. We asked Blue Bear's mommy to make the cake. Then we all donated some money and bought it at the bazaar. Oh, and something else, Walter. Mr. Thomas says he'll use your log in the tower. It'll make it strong, and next year on his birthday, he'll invite you to be a guest at the festival. That's marvelous. Oh, good for you, Walter. 
I suppose. There are a few clouds around. They should have good weather. Well, the wind is changing. Not much chance of rain, but there may be a thunder and lightning storm. I'm worried. one corner of mine. The rest of it's hidden. I wish we could look at it from even higher up. Oh, I wouldn't want to climb any higher than this, thank you. I don't mean climb. I mean like in a balloon. Balloon? I was up in one once. Never again for me. I like riding on a kite better. It's a lot more exciting. Oh my goodness. Can you really ride on kites, Mingo? Of course I can. It's great. Riding on the wind. Oh! What do you think? 
Don't you need a lot of string to fly it high in the sky? Uh, Nick and Pammy, I'm sure that you'll be happy to let us unravel your scarves to get string, right? Oh, these scarves? Not mine. I love my scarf. Please, we haven't got any other string. Your scarves would be just great. Oh, Nick. All right. Good luck, Mingo. I know you can do it. Well, I'm really scared of that. We've got to stop that forest fire. I'll go. Thank you, Mingo. If you can save that forest, the whole town will be grateful to you. Be brave. Now, hang on. <laughs> children's hiking. You think they're all right? Sure. That storm didn't last very long. <laughs> what is Mingle? What happened, Mingle? Are you all right? The lightning struck. The forest on fire. The floor. Oh, Mingle. I'll phone the fire station. is getting worse. Do you think Mingo made it? Oh, Mingo. I just hope he didn't get hurt. that we were able to prevent a disastrous forest fire. They realized the importance of warning the fire department. That is why I have asked them here today so we can thank them for what they've done. Congratulations. <laughs> That took a lot of courage to die from a flying kite the way you did. That's right. It was only because of Mingle's courage that we managed to do it. I knew it had to be done. <laughs> My brother Nick and I were very happy to give up our beautiful scarves for strength. And they were happy to. Oh, Pammy, I have already ordered new scarves from our department store. Oh. And they'll be exactly like the ones you had before. That's good. Feel better now, Pammy? Yeah, I was lost without my scarf. That was clever of you to build that kite, Floppy. Are you planning another? Yes, I am. 
But I'm thinking of making a much bigger kite using very advanced aerodynamics so it will fly much better. Oh, good. That means Mingo will be able to fly even higher. Suppose they think they're funny. Probably some mischievous children. with the brush and the paint in your hand. We're just painting a set, Mr. Mayor. It's for a play we're going to put on next week, a production of Romeo and Juliet. So, you won't admit it. Why, it's even the same color paint you've got. <laughs> Who could have done it? It's awful. There's paint all over the place. Whoever did it is mean. So you still insist it wasn't you that did this awful squalling. We swear we never did this squalling. No, it wasn't us. Huh. And if any of us had done any scrolling, it would have been a lot better than this sloppy stuff. Yeah, yeah that's right. right. Balderdash! Don't be silly. There's no such thing as good scrolling. I've got to admit, it does look like our paint, all right. Yeah, but it's, it's salty to accuse us of making such poor scrolling. All they have to do is look at what we've painted to know we could do better than that. 
Those scrawlings must have been done by someone with no artistic talent whatsoever. There's no design. Still, I guess we shouldn't blame Mr. Mayor for being so angry. It's such a mess. But we're not guilty. We'd better find out who did do that scrawling or they'll go on blaming us. Hey, Floppy, let's be detectives and solve the case. Right, we'll do it. Oh, yes, you can find the villain. Oh, Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. I was hoping you'd do that again. They always solve the case. Oh. It's, it's raining. raining. Quick, get our stuff undercover. One thing I don't understand is how he managed to do all that scrawling up on the ceiling. You think it was a man from outer space? Huh? Elementary, my dear Watson. There's a step ladder just beside you. That's how he reached the ceiling. I, I see. So at last we have a definite clue to the character of our villain. He's not afraid of heights. An interesting deduction. Perhaps the mayor would be pleased with us if we painted over some of the scrawlings. Ah, certainly, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> So, you were up there putting some more scrawlings on my wall, were you? Oh, no, Mr. Mayor. Well, we were just trying to paint over some of the scrawlings that were already there. Hmm, I see you're wearing disguises now. What does that mean? It looks very suspicious to me, pretending you're someone else. And you were in here destroying valuable evidence. We're just making things worse. Mm, I guess you're right. The only way we'll ever convince anybody that we didn't do these wall scrawlings is to catch the person who did. Oh. I'm going to catch the villain who did the scrawling and lock him up. Shows up. Why do you 
suppose the rain is a clue to who the guilty villain is? Hmm, good question, Dr. Watson. But there are some questions even Sherlock Holmes cannot answer. I'm not going to sleep tonight. I'll stay up and catch the squaller. Sherlock Holmes sleeps like anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to stop that. He tickles. <laughs> particularly fond of rain. Whenever it rains, they crawl around looking for food. This is what they do to eucalyptus leaves. And this big tree is where a lot of apple snails have their home. We're sorry, Mr. Mayor. It was our paint that they all got into. It's nothing to worry about, but just be sure you put the covers back on your paint cans every night. We, we will. will. And Mr. Mayor, you better close your doors before you go to sleep at night. Yes, you're right. Well, I'm glad you managed to solve a difficult case so successfully. <laughs> With the help of Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson, it was easy. have no imagination. Yeah, what a pity. There now, it's all fixed.
can call me Cosmo because I come from the planet Cosmo. How are you? Cosmo, huh? Where is the planet Cosmo? Is it far away? I, I mean, in our galaxy? Sure, only a few million miles. Now, would you all like to come aboard my saucer and have a look around? You might find it interesting. Hooray! I know I find it interesting. Can penguins come too? Of course you can. Oh, thank you. I want to be first. How about the rest of you? Come on. Robert, do you think it's safe to go in there? I guess. Wow. Look at that control panel. Maybe I'd understand it better if I was right side up. Wow. wow. My spaceship. I made it myself. I don't know if I'd ever be able to build a spaceship like this, but I'd like to try. Well, I've been reading a lot, you know, and I'm a student at Cosmo University. I'm in space engineering. Oh, wow! You're a student at a university and you aren't any older than I am. Oh, I'm almost eight years old now. When I was young, I had to study a lot, but I really enjoyed it. And I bet you came here to investigate us Earth creatures. No, I was just cruising in space. I really didn't intend to land, but I saw you kids down here asleep and I thought I'd come and say hello. Have you traveled in outer space much? I mean, have you visited many other planets? We've never left Earth. Well, heavens above, why don't you let me take you for a little spin in my spaceship? <laughs> and we're off. It's like a big ball with clouds all around it. It's a lot like my planet. It makes me homesick. What's that funny looking thing? That's a communication satellite Earth has sent up. Mr. Cosmo, will you take us even farther away? Sure, if you like. Wow, it's wonderful. Unbelievable. There's another messenger from Earth, a space probe. See its famous rings. Cosmo, I want to give you my Walkman as a token of our friendship. Oh, I thank you. And we thank you too. Oh. <laughs> and I have a little present for you too. In the name of the planet Cosmo, I give you this key. It shine. It's a key of friendship. Anyone who touches it will be your friend and never quarrel with you. It will give anyone a warm feeling of friendship. Thank you. Oh. Oh, it sparkles, Floppy. Oh. <laughs> what was that? It might be. Yes, it is. Meteorites. Hundreds of them. We'll just have to dodge them. Everybody's sleeping. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Huh? What became of the spaceship? Oh. Hey, we're not in the spaceship anymore. What's that? Do you mean you dreamt the same dream I had? I dreamt I was traveling in outer space on a UFO. A boy from another planet took us for a ride in a spaceship. And he told us his name was Cosmo? I'll do the same with my dream. But how could we all have the same dream at the same time? Maybe Cosmo did. <laughs> I'd be listening to this silly chatter of yours trying to make a silly dream sound important. You and your UFOs flying around in space. It wasn't a dream. So you say it wasn't a dream, huh? Show us some proof it wasn't. Well, I don't know. There, see? There aren't any such things as UFOs. Oh, well, proof or no proof, that wasn't just a dream. My earphones and Walkman are gone, so I must have really given them to Cosmo. 
<laughs> oh, you just lost them somewhere. You say you gave them away while you were cruising in space? Sounds like a fairy tale you made up. Well, I remember... Yeah, I remember. You gave them to Cosmo as a token of friendship, and Cosmo gave you... Yes, I remember. He gave me the key of friendship. Sure, you must have it. Huh? Oh, no. I must have lost it. Oh, hey, there's a key on the ground here. Look, it's the key of friendship Cosmo gave us. So it wasn't just a dream after all. Oh, I knew all along it wasn't a dream. I want to touch it, too. Me, too. Huh. The key of friendship, my eye. You must be kidding. We're not dumb. More oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Walter, let me borrow the key for a minute. I know you don't believe we went for a ride in space, but please have a good look at this key. Huh. It's just an old rusty key somebody lost. I don't know why a thing like this is so important to you. It's dull. Looks ordinary to me. Bear, thanks for letting us hold your key. Well, Walter, do you feel any different since you had it in your hand? I, yeah, it felt warm and nice, you know, a sort of friendly feeling. I feel the same way, Walter, and I'm sure our dear friends here have been telling us the truth. I bet they did go flying in outer space with Cosmo. They wouldn't lie to us about a thing like that. Oh, then you believe what we said? That we went flying in space? Mmm, of course I do, Rubera, and I'd like to have Cosmo for a friend, too. So would we. Oh, Cosmo will come back again, I'm sure of it. And when he does come back, I'll ask him to take all of us for another ride in his spaceship. Oh, would, would you? you? Of course I will, but you'll have to be polite and friendly to him. We'll be polite and friendly. We'll be like that to everybody now, and especially to you, Rubera. <laughs> <laughs>